Hey everyone, I'm Brendan. I'm the director here at the Topeka Zoo and Conservation Center and welcome to our 10 o'clock virtual education program where today we are featuring a first grade curriculum like we've been doing the last few days. I want to start off by giving a shout out to a local Topeka small business and what better place than to say hey to Hazel Hill Chocolates, one of my very favorite places to be. Uh, you can smell your way right on in there. Uh, Hazel Hill, limited hours right now. They are open from Wednesday through Saturday from 10 to 4. Confirm that on their website in case I just got the time wrong. I did speak to Nick Zaitis this morning and asked him two questions. One was just how are they doing? And he said obviously they're down right now, but they're seeing a lot of online orders. They're seeing a lot of curbside pickup orders and they are still shipping chocolates. The other question I asked Nick is, hey, this time of year, what's the best type of chocolate to get? Nick said, right now they're thinking about Mother's Day, and this Mother's Day, they're having a truffle promotion. You can get a box of truffles. It normally sells for $25. You can get it 25% off for $18.75. said, I'm in. Now I know what I'm getting my mom. Anyway, if you can, please support local. Remember, we're in this together. Topeka Strong now. Here's Rachel. Thank you, Brendan. And thank you to the sponsors of our morning education program, Topeka Collegiate and the Kokari Foundation. We appreciate you. So as Brendan said, today we are doing first grade curriculum. And this one is all about animal parent behaviors. If you remember last week, we talked about first grade curriculum relating to behaviors in terms of noises animal, animal parents make. But today we're going to talk about it in terms of other behaviors, aside from no, uh, noises. And then we're gonna go inside and meet two very fun and unique animal parents here at the Topeka Zoo. So to get started, I have six differing animals that are very good parents in the animal kingdom that I wanna talk about here. Now the first one are orangutans. If you guys have been to the Topeka Zoo recently, you know that we have a baby orangutan. His name is Boomy, and those are Bornean orangutans. Well, orangutans in general are very good mothers. They have one baby at a time, and they uh, do several different behaviors that allow that baby to survive. Not only do they feed that baby and clean that baby, but they carry that baby around and they teach it to climb. One orangutan infant, one baby, will stay with their mom for up to eight years, which is a very long time in the animal kingdom. So mammals like orangutans are super good parents. Now moving on to the bird world, one bird that I think has a really interesting way of protecting its babies are the killdeer. Killdeer is a bird we have in North America, including here in Kansas, and they nest on the ground. They can lay four, around four speckled eggs in a nest on the ground. Well, because they live on the ground, those eggs, they are vulnerable. They are at risk of predators eating them. So kill do deer moms actually do two things as a way to protect their eggs. The first thing they will do is they will pick up stones from the ground and put them in the kill deer nest so that predators can't tell which one is the egg and which one is a rock or a stone. Now the other thing that kill deers do is if a predator is near the nest, Killdeer moms will actually fake like they are injured. They will go over to the side of the nest and act like they have a broken wing and flap around all crazy. So it makes the predator think, ooh, the mom, which is bigger, is an easy meal. And as the mom flaps her broken wing and acts like she is injured, the predator pays attention to her and she leads them away from the nest. Talk about a really cool behavior. Now, as soon as that kill deer mom gets farther away, she'll just fly back, because they can fly. Now, another example of a bird who protects their babies, this is both mom and dad, this is hornbills. Hornbills are a beautiful bird that are found in Africa and Asia. And the picture I have here is of the great hornbill, which this is a species that lives over in Asia. Now, this is an example of a bird who nests 
in a tree, in a hole in a tree. And what's pretty crazy is that Mama Hornbill will actually get inside of the tree. She will lay her eggs, about two, in that egg, or in that tree, and then Daddy Hornbill actually takes mud and a little bit of poo, and he seals that hole in the tree. He literally patches it up with mud and poo, and he only leaves just enough space, as you can see in the picture, for mom's beak to reach out. And Daddy Hornbill will go and find her all of the food that she needs to eat, and he uh, pushes it into that hole. And mama will stay in that tree with her babies for six to eight weeks. Not only why they hatch out, but until they're big enough to be able to survive once they leave the tree and once they outgrow it. So Daddy Hornbill is actually the one who has to use a lot of energy finding the food and feeding mom and babies through just the little hole in the tree. Super cool parenting. Now the last two that I want to talk about live in the ocean. The first is the Waddell seal. These live down in Antarctica. When I was down there a couple years ago, I actually saw Waddell seals. They are gigantic. And they have thick layers of blubber that keep them warm even in freezing cold Antarctica. Well, Waddell seals have one baby at a time and they have to be able to survive in extreme conditions like Antarctica. After two weeks, this baby seal has to be able to learn how to swim. So mama teaches that baby how to swim. She also teaches it how to look for the right holes in the ice to come up for air because they are mammals so they have to hold their breath and breathe through lungs. And she teaches the baby how to use its teeth as a way to break the ice so it can get air. So even down in Antarctica, mothers have to really pay attention and use their behaviors to help their babies survive. Now the final one I wanna talk about out here before we move inside are whales. Really big moms with really big calves like the humpback whale. These are examples of animals who are also good moms. Now humpback whales, they are super big. When a baby is born, it is about 15 feet long and weighs about 3,000 pounds. But even this big baby needs to know how to survive. Humpback whales, they can travel super long distances. So mama humpback whale shows her baby where to go each summer in Alaska as a place to feed and a place to see all of the other whales. And they know that that is a safe location. They also use sounds as a way to communicate. They have low frequency, which means you can't really hear it, um, sounds that allow mama and baby to stay together. And they're so quiet that mom and baby can hear it, but big predators like a killer whale who wants to eat the baby can't. So by using those sounds, mama communicates to her baby where she is and to stay with her as they migrate, as they move from one location in the ocean to the next. So friends, there are so many behaviors that animal parents do every day in the animal kingdom that their babies learn from their mom and their dad, and that allows the babies to survive. So as your work to do at home today, included in this Facebook video is a chart, is a worksheet. And what I want you guys to do is pick two animals that you like in the animal kingdom. Write the first animal's name here, the second animal name here, and what I want you guys to do is look up a few behaviors that the parents do as a way to protect their babies. Some options could be penguins, elephants, octopus, polar bear, cheetahs, manatees, killer whales, and dolphins. Those are just a few options of really good animal parents, but you can choose any animal you'd like. And in the middle here, I want you to write down any behaviors that both animals you choose, both of them do. As always, take a picture and put it in the comments. So this is the time where we are actually going to move inside because we have some super tall, super cute animal parents inside. So we are going to grab our power cord um, so we can take our electricity inside. And then we are going to go meet our reticulated giraffes. So give me just one second. We're gonna unplug and then we're gonna walk inside.
Okay, so reticulated giraffes here at the Kapika Zoo, we actually have five of them. We have Sergeant Peppers, who is our adult male. We have Hope and Abby, who are two adult females. And then we actually had two giraffe calves back in 2018. We had Kanza, whose mother is uh, Abby. And we had Elizabeth, whose mother is Hope. And both of them have the same dad, who is Sergeant Peppers. Now these animals, they are really good moms. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk inside and we're gonna meet the zookeepers here who take care of our beautiful giraffe family. So we're going to talk to Dalton. He is one of the keepers of the giraffes. Now the reason we started outside and moved inside is because inside the building we always have to wear masks. And the reason that is, is because we wanna make sure that our animals are staying safe. Not only during this pandemic, but at all times. We don't wanna transfer any diseases. And it's easier for me to teach the class this portion without a mask on. So give me just one second. I'm going to put my mask on so that all of our animals stay safe. And then we're gonna go meet Dalton. All right, here we go. Okay, just kidding. Here we go. So many giraffes, especially new moms, will struggle in the wild um, to deal with maybe nursing or um, just that, that new environment of having a baby and taking care of somebody else. But Abby picked it up right away, um, really let Kanza nurse, um, and did a really good job. And the same with Hope, who had her baby Liz a few months later. Um, she did a really good job of also just letting Hope or letting Liz just dive right in and um, start to nurse right away. So they've been really good moms for their first time. Um, at this point, Liz and Kanza are a little bit older, so they're dealing a little bit more with um, eating alongside their moms, where um, these ladies really like their food, so sometimes their moms will want to steal their food. So if you ever watch us on the cameras, you might see us trying to babysit, if you will, and watch them so that we make sure that Liz and Kanza get all of their food because their moms really, really like their brain. Wonderful. And can you talk a little bit about each giraffe's personality, please? Yeah, so Hope and Liz are both more of the adventurous giraffes. They're a little bit braver. Um, they like to try new things, experiment a little bit more, um, and they definitely have big personalities. They really like to um, be right in your face, as you can see with Hope right now. Um, they're always around and they're not afraid. Um, where Abby and Hansa are a little bit more curious and cautious. Um, they tend to be the last ones to deal with certain things, like um, maybe shifting outside when there's a new piece of enrichment or something. Hope and Liz will handle that much, much faster than Abby and Hansa will. Okay, excellent. And um, somebody asked, how do you tell the giraffes apart? Well, there's many different ways to tell them apart. Um, one of the key ways, if you're, you're new to giraffes and trying to figure it out, is they all have unique chest patterns. So if you look at their chest right about here, every single giraffe has a different chest pattern. So if you memorize those, you'll kind of know who's who that way. Um, 
you can tell them apart by their personalities. Um, obviously, Liz and Kanza are super easy because they're babies. Um, and then Hope and Abby are drastically different types, so that's easy as well. Um, and then Sarge is usually separate, so he's a little bit easier to tell apart. But I think the chest pattern is usually the key way that people will try. Yeah, one of the best ways for me to tell Hope and Abby apart is Hope has a lot more white in between each of her patterns than Abby does. But, um, so they wanted to know, will Kanza and Elizabeth uh, stay here at the Topeka Zoo? Do we know that yet? We do. So Kanza will more than likely leave. Liz will more than likely stay as of right now. Uh, so hopefully Kanza will have a recommendation and be leaving before long so that he can breed and contribute to his species. He obviously can't breed here because he can't breed with his mom or his sister. Um, so we would have difficulties with him breeding. We also have Sarge and we don't want to deal with two bulls who could compete and potentially hurt each other. So hopefully Kanza will leave. Um, Liz will likely stay as of right now. We haven't heard whether she has a recommendation or not. Okay, excellent. And how old uh, do giraffes get? So it depends on gender usually. So um, females can live upwards of mid to late 20s to even early 30s, whereas bulls can be late teens to early to mid 20s usually. Okay, wonderful. And the reason that we are inside today is, do you want to talk about that, Dalton? We were originally planning to be outside. Yeah, so as everyone knows, it rained last night. Giraffes are not the greatest at walking in muddy environments. They're not really equipped to do that. They're more comfortable with walking on really dry, firm ground. So in order for us to keep them safe and not let them hurt themselves accidentally, maybe if they get spooked and start to run, we don't want them to slip. So they're just inside hanging out with us while the ground dries up a little bit. Maybe if it dries up with this nice sunny day, they can go outside this afternoon. If not, they're more than happy to enjoy us inside and all these added treats. Excellent. And Linus, he's always on these calls. He wants to know what are their predators of giraffes? Great questions, Linus. So giraffes have lots of predators in the wild. Their main predator would be lions, but most predators there are opportunistic, so if they want to take down a giraffe, and you know, usually pack animals would be better at it. Um, so dogs and things of that nature will also come after them in the wild. Um, so lions are definitely their main predator. And can you talk about how they defend themselves against the lion? What part of their bodies do they use? Yeah, so giraffes have a very, very strong kick, which is why we usually stay out of their way. We don't go in with them. Um, one kick from a giraffe is more than enough to kill a full-grown lion. So we try to stay as far away from their feet as possible. They're both powerful with their front and back feet. So to protect their babies, to protect themselves, generally the first thing they'll do is kick. And can you talk a little bit about the ossicones, the two things that are on top of their head and what those are used for, please? Yeah, so they're somewhat used for protection. Um, especially in males where they have those really hard head with lots of calcium deposits. So uh, they will actually use those and swing their heads to hit each other for protection. And that's another thing giraffes can do for predators is use those really, really hard bony structures to hit people or to hit other uh, animals like predators or even other giraffes if they're fighting for males. Uh, and they'll use those to you know really get in and hurt something if they have to. Exactly, and Eli said humans are one of their big predators, and he is absolutely right. Uh, giraffes are undergoing something called a silent extinction. There are actually less than 100,000 total giraffes in the wild. Um, there's fewer than African elephants, but people don't hear about their uh, rate of decreasing as much as you do elephants, which is why we call it a silent extinction. But they are hunted um, so people can have them as trophies, unfortunately. Somebody wants to know, do they bite? They can bite. Any animal with teeth and a mouth can bite. Um, luckily for us, they don't have any top teeth in the front of their mouth, so they have kind of a hard pad, and that really helps them pull things off the tree or whatever they're browsing for. So they do bite, but it's more of you know a pinch between your fingers um, than anything else. It hurts, but it's not probably going to take your hands off or take your fingers off, but they definitely will bite. And it's nothing usually intentional. It's usually just they're really food motivated, so they might grab you by accident. Sure. Um, Amy wants to know, how tall is Elizabeth now? 
she is probably about eight to ten feet. We haven't measured her in a while, but she's growing really rapidly. And how tall can giraffes get? So male giraffes can get probably about 18 to 20 feet usually, um, whereas female giraffes fall in more of the 16, 14 to 16 feet range. Awesome. And how long have we had these giraffes? So not very long for all of them. So Hope is our oldest and longest staying giraffe at 10 years old. Um, and then we have Abby and Sarge. Sarge is eight, so he's, we've had him about six years. He came from Oklahoma City. We've had Abby for a little bit less time than that, and she came from Albuquerque. And then we've had Liz and Kanza for going on two years now. Wonderful. Um, what's the most enriching thing for you as the keeper caring for these animals? Um, probably putting brows up for them mm -hmm. and just seeing their excitement. So if we get a nice piece of elm, which is their favorite type of brows, and they really just go nuts for it. And what looks to be a small tree for us, they'll strip it, completely bark everything in a couple minutes. So that is really, really rewarding, as well as creating new enrichment for them. It's really difficult because they're, they're naturally just cautious, so they might be really reluctant, but if we find something that they really like, it's very enriching for us. I know one of Serge's favorite enrichment items is the soccer ball, Absolutely. right? <laughs> he loves that big inflatable he soccer ball. He definitely does. Um, Casey asked, how long are their tongues? Their tongues can be about 18 inches. So you actually don't even see how long their tongues are if you're feeding them or up close to them. They don't stick their tongues completely out, but they can have a very, very long tongue. Yeah, and can you talk a little bit about the color of that tongue and why it's like that? Yeah, so if you haven't noticed, the giraffe tongue is purple, and to do that, they want to protect themselves from sunburns in the wild because their tongues are always out of their mouth. They're a very tactile animal with their tongue, so they're always moving it around and feeling for uh, different brows. They're licking things all the time. So to help keep them from getting sunburned, they have purple tongues. Yeah, I think that's so cool. Um, just some earlier questions. Maggie asked how old can a seal get? Generally, it's 20 to 30 years in the wild, Maggie. They can live a little bit longer, but that's their average lifespan. And Casey asked how big do humpback whales get? They can reach up to 50 tons in weight and be about 50 feet long as well, Casey. So they get gigantic. And those humpback whale babies stay with their mom for about a year. Um, Casey wanted to know regarding giraffes, do they usually live in herds like this or packs? They do. So usually females and babies and maybe some young males will live in herds together called a tower. And usually that's maybe 15 to 20 individuals. It can be much, long, much larger if they want it to be. But usually it's pretty small. Um, and then older males and especially bulls stay usually by themselves and outside of the herd because they're competing with each other to get inside the herd where they could actually breed. But most of the time they'll stay by themselves. So it's usually females, babies, and young males who will stay in the herd together. Gotcha. And do they have a good sense of hearing? They do. They have a really great sense of hearing. You can see their really large ears, uh, kind of like elf ears or something. They're moving around all the time. So they can hear quite a long ways away and they can definitely hear much better than we can. Okay, and somebody wants to know, can you ride a giraffe like a horse? I'm assuming that's not advisable. That is not advisable. I would definitely not recommend it. Giraffes are much less tame than a horse would be, so they are not going to deal with that anywhere close to what a horse would. Right, and Amy asks, is Liz in the stall behind you? Yes, she is. She is over there in the corner. Um, enjoying some nice alfalfa. Right, so the one in the corner right there is Liz. And somebody wants to know where Sergeant Pepper is. Megan, can you flip the camera around? So Sergeant Pepper is just in his own stall, the big guy right over here. And then Kanza is next to him as well on the left. Um, what are the pads on their feet for? Just getting down? On their, like the top what, part of their legs? On, the, on what looks like the knee and then maybe the foot. Yeah, so the pads on those are really just calluses built up from laying down. So they have a really unique way to lay down where they have to curl their legs to get down. Um, so that really results in these nice thick calluses where they're not going to cut themselves up on the, the rough ground that might be rocky or covered in sticks and things of that nature. And how long are their necks? 
Their necks are usually about uh, between five to eight feet depending on the giraffe. So their necks are usually about as tall as, you know, an average sized person. And one fun fact about giraffe necks is they have the same amount of neck bones as we do as humans. We both have seven. Theirs are just way longer than ours, which is kind of a fun fact. Um, do they sleep standing up? They can. Usually if you see them kind of facing out, um, where it looks like they're just kind of staring off into space, they might be asleep. If you look at Liz right now, that's a really good example of that. Um, but they also do lay down uh, where they'll curl their necks behind themselves and they'll sleep that way as well. Mm -hmm. They don't often sleep that much though. They really only need maybe an hour or so and it could be even as low as about 20 minutes in the wild depending on how much um, they feel like they're threatened. That's pretty fascinating. Carol wants to know, will there be a new baby in the near future? Well, we don't actually know that yet, so it's not really up to us. It's up to what's called the SSP, or the Species Survival Plan, um, and they're the ones that make a recommendation for us of who to breed and how best to uh, fit genetics so that we have a really diverse population. Um, so we don't have any recommendations currently, as we still have two babies, but hopefully in you know, a couple years or so, we might have a new baby. And where do giraffes live in the wild? They live in Africa on savanna style um, environments. So they live in uh, typically kind of dry environments with lots of hard ground, lots of acacia trees. They really like those environments. And do we know when Kans is leaving yet? We do not. We don't have a date on that. Um, nothing is official as of yet. Okay. Um, and can you one more time say how big they get, please? So females can be about 14 to 16 feet is usually their range, while males are usually about 18 to 20 feet. Wonderful. And how long do they live? So males, especially the bulls, will live probably late teens to even early to mid 20s, whereas females can be uh, mid to late 20s and even early 30s in some rare cases. Right, so 20 to 30. Um, okay, and do they sit often? Some of them do, some don't. So Kanza is usually the one that lays down more than any of the rest of them, whereas you might look at Sarge and he almost never lays down. So it just depends, but they won't lay down as much as you might think they would. Usually about an hour or so a day, maybe two or three, depending on how relaxed and how comfortable they are. And can you guys go into their exhibit with them? We cannot. So we try really hard to stay out of it because we don't want to be kicked by their feet, um, which would probably kill us if we were. Um, and we try to keep protected contact as much as possible. All righty. Well, you guys, that looks like the end of our questions. I think we got almost all of them. Does anybody have any questions at home about baby animals or giraffes? Any questions for Dalton, their wonderful keeper? A lot of them are saying they are so cute. They are very cute. Yeah, they're one of our most popular animals here at the Topeka Zoo. Um, why is Kanza in a stall by himself? So we're trying to work on Kanza's separation. So as he gets uh, more mature, he's going to be wanting to breed and we obviously don't want him to breed and with the rest of his herd because that's gonna create genetic issues. So we wanna do that and then we also wanna work on him being comfortable by himself so that if and when he does leave, he's more comfortable and he knows how to be without his mom. And do you guys ever leave them outside overnight to sleep? So usually what we do is we give them access so they can choose to come inside if they want to, but we will definitely let them have free range to outside when it's warm enough so they have to be above 50 degrees to go outside. If we know that the low is going to be above 50 degrees, they are definitely allowed to be outside all night if they choose to be. Okay, wonderful. And approximately how big is Sarge? Sarge is about 18 feet right now, and he's still probably going to get maybe a couple feet bigger. Um, so he, he might reach 19 feet or so, but right now he's about 18 feet. Okay, wonderful. And somebody asked, how old is the youngest one, which is Elizabeth? Liz is about a year and a half right now, so her birthday is coming up late summer to early fall. Um, so she's about a year and a half, a little bit older. Yeah, she was born at the end of August 2018. And Casey wants to know, how do they help their babies? So usually they will protect their babies most by staying near them. Um, so they don't often leave them in the wild. 
um, and they will kick them, or they will kick uh, predators the most, other than trying to maybe encourage them to nurse or things of that nature. They're not really overbearing parents. Okay. All righty. I think that is, mo oh, and do they kick like a horse? They essentially do, yes. So they will kick with their front or their back feet. Um, and they can kick forwards or backwards. Oh, forwards. I didn't know that. Forwards and backwards. That's pretty cool. All righty. Well, that looks like um, the end of our questions for today. So thank you so much, Dalton. Okay, one more question. I know we could be here all day with the giraffes. Yeah. There are so many differing things to ask about. What is their favorite enrichment? Their favorite enrichment, Sarge's is definitely the soccer ball. But definitely what they all like the most is food style enrichment. So we could give them items that contain food, and that's definitely what they're going to go towards before an item that may just have a scent or something. So they all like biscuits that we give them. They're called leaf eater biscuits. That's just a bunch of, it's like compressed leaves. They really, really love those. That's what we train with as well. Um, and they really just love their feeders. So we put a little bit of lettuce and some biscuits in. Those are usually their favorite. Wonderful. And someone asked how tall are they? So we've covered that a couple of times. Sarge is 18 feet. Um, male giraffes generally get a little bit taller than females. Dalton said 14 to 16 feet yes. for the females. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Sarge, he's still growing just a little bit, right? He can yes. get just a little bit taller. Yep, and he'll keep getting those calcium deposits that will likely add a, you know, a few inches. Nothing severe, but um, that'll also make him a little taller as well. Okay. Alrighty, well, we will be back tomorrow for second grade curriculum on rainforests, and you guys can probably guess where we will be filming that. So we will see you guys tomorrow, 10 a.m. Thank you so much, Dalton. We Absolutely. really appreciate Thank it. You guys. Bye, guys.